Hey, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about vitamin D in relationship to why everyone all of a sudden is deficient in vitamin D. So I'm going to give you the basics of it and then I'll get into the why. So here's some basics. Number one, our bodies need about 1,200 international units of vitamin D per day. Okay, that's a general amount. It might go up or down depending on several factors. One is your stress level, because obviously if you're more sick or more stressed, you're going to need more. Um, the foods that have vitamin D would be cod liver oil. That's why your grandmother recommended that. Uh, fatty fish, uh, butter, cheese, cream, uh, raw milk, very high in vitamin D. But most people get it from the sun, because what happens is the UV lights convert cholesterol on your skin, just turn that cholesterol into um, a chemical reaction that occurs to your liver and kidney that then eventually makes vitamin D. So your body will make vitamin D from sun and the interaction of the cholesterol on your skin. Okay, so that's how we get it. Vitamin D is used to support bone. So in a child, you could have, if you're very deficient, you can have this thing called rickets, which is very weak bones. The bones start bending. So there is a connection between vitamin D and bone. I'll get into the specifics in a little bit. The immune system, highly uh, sensitive to vitamin D. So if you're vitamin D deficient, you can have immune problems. Um, but vitamin D is, is not really like a vitamin. It acts like a hormone. It is a hormone. It's a pre-hormone. So it turns into a steroid. It's a type of steroid. A lot of times when you get vitamin D from the pharmacy, they'll give you the wrong kind and they, they make it synthetically. You want a, a more of a natural form. All right, so now why all of a sudden is everyone deficient in D? That's, that's weird. Well, there's a couple reasons for it. Number one, MDs only recently have been testing vitamin D. Previously, they haven't really looked for it. So that could be one reason. Um, number two, people don't go out in the sun as much, especially as you get older. You're going to stay away from the sun because of the scare of skin cancer and things like that. So people are not going out in the sun. Kids don't go out in the sun as much. We're mainly in an office behind a computer. Um, also, low cholesterol diets. Remember, sun converts the cholesterol into vitamin D. So we need cholesterol. So if you're on low cholesterol medication, or you're going on a low fat diet or low cholesterol diet, it could be, that could be a culprit. You don't have any raw material to build vitamin D. Or it could be a lack of something called bile. I've done videos on this. Bile is the detergent that breaks down the grease. It is a fluid from your liver that breaks down fats, specifically fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Without bile, you can't absorb vitamin D. So it could be a digestive liver issue. Okay, and that's why if the doctor gives you so much, recommends so much vitamin uh, D per, per week, like I've had people come in and taking 50,000 milligrams, like way more than you would need once a week, not, every, not spread out, but once a week. And if they don't have bile, they're going to get uh, vitamin, uh, it's called vitamin hyper, um, hypervitaminosis, vitamin D. That's actually vitamin D toxicity. That's too much vitamin D. And the symptoms for vitamin D toxicity would be the calcium starts clogging up your heart, your lungs, the kidneys. You get kidney stones. You get all sorts of weakness in the muscle. You get really, you have a lot of fatigue. So just because you are deficient doesn't mean you need to go overboard and go the other direction and go way over the edge. So you need bile to absorb vitamin D and make it work. And the last thing is not very known, but stress, specifically the stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is the adrenal hormone, the stress hormone that competes for other steroids. It, like, in other words, the stress hormone goes in the body and it's received in a receptor. Um, and if there's too much stress hormone, there won't be enough receptors for vitamin D. So now vitamin D doesn't go in there because vitamin D is a steroid. So is cortisol. They're both steroids. They're almost hormone-like. So when you have a lot of cortisol or stress, you block the ability to absorb vitamin D. 
And honestly, I think this is probably the, more, the most common reason why people have low vitamin D levels is stress. Um, so we have that and also the flight or fight mode, um, the adrenaline rush, lack of sleep. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. So no wonder we have low vitamin D levels. So that's, that's some basics on what vitamin D does. And now I want to show you some interesting data about the opposing hormone. Now, very few people know about this, but in nature, all vitamins are synergistic. They work with other vitamins. Vitamin D has a synergistic vitamin called vitamin F. In other words, they work together as a teeter-totter type mechanism. When one goes up, the other one goes down. But the function of vitamin D is to take the calcium from the stomach and put it into the blood. The purpose of vitamin F is to take the calcium from the blood and put it into the skin tissues, okay? And that is why vitamin F is a protective mechanism against all types of skin problems. Uh, maybe you have never heard of vitamin F. It's the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So that would be um, like the safflower oil, the flax oil, the walnut and walnut oil, <clears throat> sunflower oil, pumpkin seed oils or pumpkin seeds, fatty fish, there, e there is some actually even some vitamin F in, in butter too. There's also vitamin F in olive oil. And there's, there's one type of food that you have a 50-50 split of vitamin D and vitamin F, and that would be cod liver oil, which so your grandmother was correct. Um, so, so those vitamins work together. Now vitamin D is the sun, milk products, cream, cheese, raw milk, and then we have the vitamin F. This is more saturated fats. These are unsaturated fats, okay? So they work together. Now, if you're deficient in vitamin F, <clears throat> you will get hives. You will get thick skin, like a farmer that's out in the sun so long, his uh, skin becomes very, very, very thick. And that is because you're getting all this vitamin D vitamin T toxicity, which automatically reduces your vitamin F, which automatically drops your calcium in the skin and leaves you vulnerable for sunstroke, uh, sunburns, all sorts of skin problems. Um, <clears throat> so here's, here's the problem. What you want to do is you want to consider that they always have vitamin F with vitamin D. Um, hives, muscle cramps, sunburn, um, it would be difficult to get sunburn if you had enough vitamin F in your bloodstream. So if you actually do have sunstroke, go ahead and go in the house and start consuming more flax oil or something like that to get more of that vitamin F, and that will help you heal that sunburn very, very fast. But it's just a depletion of, of calcium to the skin. Um, canker source. Viruses come out of remission when you're low in vitamin D because... Vitamin, I'm sorry, vitamin F, okay? So vitamin F goes down, viruses come out of remission because there's no calcium there to keep the virus in check and keep it back in remission. So viruses come out of remission when you're deficient in vitamin F. Uh, that would be canker source. So that's why the immune system is very highly linked with this. Um, the other interesting point is that um, polio, which is a virus, always tended to come come out outbreaks in the late fall or the early, uh, no, the early fall, late summer. Um, what else? Papillomaviruses come out in the late summer. The flu comes out in the fall, which is right after summer. Uh, a lot of virus outbreaks occur after the summer months when you have all this vitamin D and that's all it's doing is depleting your vitamin F, making you susceptible for these viruses to come out. The virus is already in there. It's just coming out. Um, the other thing is the cervical cancer, which is viral-related uh, cancer of the cervix. That, those outbreaks come out in the late summer, which I just find that being an interesting connection. Um, I don't know if that's a fact, but it sounds like it correlates. So this is the relationship. Make sure that you balance it out and understand this because you don't just need vitamin D, you need vitamin F to keep the whole thing working. And now you understand how it all works. And so make sure that you consume a lot of these omega-3 fatty acids in your diet and that will kind of keep you out of trouble. So the other thing I want to mention is that 
It's not as simple as just taking vitamin D. It could be you don't have any bile. So if you don't have bile, you need bile salts to be able to digest the, the vitamins, the fat soluble vitamins, so you can start pulling in the vitamin D in the bloodstream. And there's really nothing wrong with being out in the sun as long as you have vitamin A to protect you, and that way it'll keep the calcium in there as well. So you want to take all this data and look at the whole picture, not just like this, like through a little microscope. And so that's kind of the holistic view. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, write down uh, any comments about it below, and I will see you in the next video.